If you were asked to list some of the richest countries in the world, I am sure you will list countries like the US, Australia, Norway, Sweden, and even the UK. But did you know that there is a country in Southeast Asia that is almost as rich as these countries? Yes, I am talking about the Sultanate of Brunei. Well, for those of you who have never heard about this country, grab a seat because in this video, we shall be shining the light of the oil-rich country, telling you about how the country got rich, what it means to live in Brunei, and who their supreme leader is. 1. Brunei is a small, oil-rich country located on the island of Borneo in Southeast Asia. It has a population of around 450,000 people spread across 5,756 km square of land. Brunei is a constitutional monarchy, with the Sultan as the head of state and government. The country's economy is heavily dependent on its oil and gas industry, which has made it one of the wealthiest nations in the world. Brunei is known for its beautiful mosques and Islamic architecture, as well as its vibrant cultural heritage. The country is considered one of the safest and most peaceful in the world, with a strong emphasis on education, healthcare, and social welfare which are all free. Bandar Siri Begawan is the capital and largest city of Brunei and the official language of the country is Malay. The currency used in Brunei is the Brunei dollars which is closely tied to the Singaporean dollar. Brunei is covered by extensive rainforests, with approximately 78% of its land area being covered by forests. These rainforests are among the oldest and most diverse in Southeast Asia and are home to a wide range of plant and animal species, including rare and endangered species. The forests provide important ecological services, such as regulating the climate and maintaining soil fertility, and are also an important source of timber and other forest products. While the government of Brunei has implemented initiatives to protect the forests, deforestation and forest degradation remain significant threats to these valuable ecosystems. 2. Before the discovery of oil and gas in Brunei, the country's economy was primarily based on agriculture, fishing, and trade. Brunei was renowned for its production of high-quality rice, and its fishermen were skilled in catching a variety of fish and seafood in the waters surrounding the country. Brunei was a prosperous kingdom in the 16th century, with a powerful navy and a large territory that included parts of present-day Malaysia and the Philippines. The country's sultan was highly regarded as a Muslim leader and was known for his patronage of the arts and culture. In the 19th and early 20th centuries, Brunei came under pressure from European powers seeking to expand their influence in Southeast Asia. The country ceded some of its territories to the British in exchange for protection, and in 1888, it became a British protectorate. During the colonial period, Brunei's economy remained largely based on agriculture and fishing, with some small-scale mining of minerals such as coal. The British also developed some infrastructure in the country, including roads, schools, and hospitals. Oil was discovered in Brunei in 1929, by a subsidiary of the British Malayan Petroleum Company, now known as Royal Dutch Shell. At the time, Brunei was a British protectorate, and the British government had granted Shell exclusive rights to explore for oil in the country. The discovery of oil in Brunei was the result of years of exploration and drilling by Shell and other oil companies in the region. In 1926, Shell began drilling its first well in Brunei. But it was not until 1929 that a significant oil discovery was made in the Syria field. The discovery of oil in Brunei transformed the country's economy and brought significant wealth to the country. The oil industry quickly became the main driver of Brunei's economy, and the country's wealth allowed it to modernize its infrastructure and develop its social services, including healthcare and education. Today, Brunei is one of the world's largest exporters of liquefied natural gas and has significant oil reserves with 180,000 barrels produced per day. The oil and gas industry remains the main driver of the country's economy and accounts for the majority of its GDP and government revenue at 99%. Brunei currently has a GDP of $18.4 billion and a GDP per capita of $42,939. 3. The Sultan of Brunei is Hassanal Bolkiah who has been in power since 1967. He is the 29th Sultan of Brunei and one of the longest reigning monarchs in the world. The Sultan has significant political power in Brunei. 
serving as both the head of state and the head of government. He is assisted in governing the country by a cabinet of ministers appointed by him. In addition to his roles as head of state and government, the Sultan of Brunei holds a number of other positions. He is the Prime Minister, the Minister of Defense, and the Minister of Finance and Economy. He also serves as the Supreme Commander of the Royal Brunei Armed Forces and the Chancellor of the University of Brunei Darussalam. The Sultan of Brunei is also known for his philanthropic work, particularly in the areas of education and health. He has established a number of charitable foundations and organizations that provide assistance to those in need in Brunei and other countries. He is also a strong supporter of environmental conservation and has taken steps to protect Brunei's natural resources. The Sultan of Brunei is a highly respected figure both within the country and abroad, and he is known for his commitment to the well-being of his people and the development of his country. However, his rule has been criticized by some for its authoritarian nature and restrictions on political freedoms and human rights. 4. Still on the Sultan of Brunei, Hassan al Bolkiah is known for his extensive collection of luxury cars. Over the years, the Sultan has amassed a collection of over 7,000 high end automobiles, including many rare and exotic models. The Sultan's collection is said to be one of the largest and most valuable car collections in the world, with some estimates placing its value at over $5 billion. Many of the cars in the collection are custom built or one of a kind models and some are adorned with gold and other precious materials. The collection includes many prestigious brands such as Ferrari, Lamborghini, Rolls-Royce and Bentley, as well as several unique and rare models that are not available to the general public. Some of the cars in the collection have been used in state functions and ceremonial events, while others are kept in private storage facilities. Despite the size and value of the collection, the Sultan has been known to donate some of his cars to charitable causes. In 2019, for example, he donated three of his cars to a charity auction in Monaco, with the proceeds going to support environmental conservation efforts. While the Sultan's collection of luxury cars is certainly impressive, it is important to note that it is just one aspect of his larger personal wealth and the wealth of the Brunei government. The collection has also been the subject of controversy and criticism, particularly in light of allegations of human rights abuses and restrictions on political freedoms in Brunei. 5. Brunei has one of the highest car ownership rates in the world. According to a report by the World Health Organization, Brunei ranks second in the world in terms of car ownership per capita, with approximately 626 cars per 1,000 people. The high car ownership rate in Brunei is partly due to the country's relatively high GDP per capita and the fact that oil and gas are the main drivers of the country's economy. This has allowed many Bruneians to afford cars and other luxuries. In addition, Brunei has a relatively small population and a well-developed road network, which has made car ownership a convenient and practical mode of transportation for many people. However, the high car ownership rate in Brunei has also led to concerns about traffic congestion and air pollution in urban areas. To address these issues, the government has implemented a number of measures aimed at promoting public transportation and reducing car usage, such as the introduction of a bus rapid transit system and the implementation of carpooling initiatives. 6. Education and healthcare in Brunei are free. The Brunei government provides free education and healthcare to all citizens and permanent residents of the country. This includes primary, secondary, and tertiary education as well as medical treatment and hospitalization. Education in Brunei is of a high standard, with a focus on developing students' critical thinking skills and promoting the country's cultural heritage. The literacy rate in Brunei is 98%. The government has invested heavily in education, with a significant portion of the national budget allocated to the sector. Similarly, healthcare in Brunei is of a high standard, with well-equipped hospitals and clinics staffed by trained healthcare professionals. The government has invested in the development of the healthcare sector with a focus on providing accessible and affordable healthcare to all citizens. While education and healthcare are free in Brunei, there are some limitations to the services provided. For example, some specialized medical treatments may not be available in the country and may require patients to seek treatment overseas. In addition, while education is free, there may be additional costs associated with school uniforms and textbooks. Overall, however, 
The provision of free education and healthcare is a key component of Brunei's social welfare system and is seen as an important factor in promoting the well-being of its citizens. 7. The residential palace of the King of Brunei costs $1.5 billion. The Astana Nurul Iman is the official residence of the Sultan of Brunei and serves as the seat of the Brunei government. It is located on the banks of the Brunei River in the capital city of Bandar Seri Begawan. The palace is considered one of the largest residential palaces in the world, covering an area of approximately 2.15 million square feet. The Astana Nurul Iman was completed in 1984 and took over four years to build. The palace is designed in a blend of Islamic and Italian Renaissance architectural styles, with marble floors, gold-plated elevator doors, and crystal chandeliers. In addition to serving as the residence of the Sultan and his family, the Astana Nurul Iman is also used for state functions and ceremonies. The palace contains a banquet hall that can accommodate up to 5,000 guests, as well as a mosque that can accommodate up to 1,500 worshippers. While the exact cost of the Astana Nurul Iman is unknown, it is widely considered one of the most expensive residences in the world. The palace is estimated to be worth several billion dollars and is equipped with a wide range of luxurious amenities including a large collection of rare cars, a private mosque, and a cinema. Despite its opulence, the Astana Nurul Iman is also used for charitable purposes and serves as a symbol of the Brunei government's commitment to supporting the welfare of its citizens. 8. Marriages between Muslims and non-Muslims are generally not allowed in Brunei, including marriages between Muslims and Christians. This is due to the fact that Brunei is an Islamic state and Islamic law prohibits Muslims from marrying non-Muslims. In addition, the government of Brunei has implemented a strict interpretation of Islamic law, and there are strict penalties for those who violate these laws. For example, in 2014, the government implemented a new penal code that includes provisions for stoning and amputation as punishments for certain crimes. However, there are some exceptions to the prohibition on interfaith marriage in Brunei. Non-Muslims who wish to marry Muslims in Brunei must first obtain permission from the Ministry of Religious Affairs. The permission is granted on a case-by-case -case basis, and the non-Muslim partner must agree to convert to Islam before the marriage can take place. 9. The media in Brunei is not entirely free. The government of Brunei exercises significant control over the media, and there are restrictions on freedom of speech and the press in the country. In Brunei, the government owns all newspapers and broadcasting organizations, and journalists are required to obtain licenses from the government in order to work in the country. The government also has the power to censor and regulate the content of the media, and there are laws in place that criminalize criticism of the government or the monarchy. In addition, the government has been known to use its control over the media to suppress dissent and opposition. Journalists and media outlets that are critical of the government or the monarchy can face harassment, intimidation, and legal action. However, there are some independent media outlets in Brunei, and some journalists are able to report on issues of public interest and concern. Social media platforms, such as Facebook and Twitter, are also widely used in Brunei, and they have provided a space for citizens to express their opinions and share information. While there are some limitations on freedom of the press and expression in Brunei, there are still opportunities for independent reporting and discussion. However, journalists and citizens who speak out against the government or the monarchy may face repercussions, and the media landscape in the country remains highly controlled by the government. 10. Brunei has one of the highest obesity rates in the world. According to a report by the World Population Review, Brunei has an obesity rate of approximately 25.9% which is among the highest in Southeast Asia and the world. Here are several factors that contribute to the high obesity rate in Brunei. One major factor is the country's changing diet and lifestyle. As Brunei has become more prosperous in recent decades, diets have shifted from traditional, healthy foods to more processed and high-calorie foods. Additionally, sedentary lifestyles and a lack of physical activity have contributed to rising obesity rates in the country. In response to the obesity epidemic, the government of Brunei has implemented several initiatives aimed at promoting healthy lifestyles and reducing obesity rates. These include public health campaigns, the promotion of physical activity, 
and the introduction of regulations aimed at encouraging healthier food choices. Despite these efforts, however, obesity remains a significant public health challenge in Brunei, and more needs to be done to address the issue. The high obesity rate in the country has been linked to an increased risk of chronic diseases such as diabetes, heart disease, and stroke, highlighting the need for continued efforts to promote healthy lifestyles and reduce obesity rates. 11. Brunei has no personal income tax and capital gains tax. One of the main sources of government revenue in Brunei is from oil and gas exports. The government receives significant income from these exports, which are subject to various taxes and royalties. In addition, there are several other taxes and fees that are levied on businesses and individuals in the country, such as import duties, excise taxes, and property taxes. Furthermore, while there is no personal income tax in Brunei, there are other forms of government revenue collection. For example, the government charges a 5% sales tax on most goods and services, including food, clothing, and electronics. Additionally, there are fees associated with various government services, such as passport applications or vehicle registrations. Overall, while Brunei does not have a personal income tax, there are still various forms of taxation and government revenue collection in the country. However, the government's significant revenue from oil and gas exports has allowed it to provide many social welfare benefits to its citizens, such as free health care and education. 12. Family plays a central role in Brunei. The family is the focal point of Bruneian society. In Brunei, the family includes extended family members such as cousins, uncles, aunts, and even close friends. Extended family members are expected to remain loyal to each other. Brunei has a hierarchical culture where position and age are revered. Children are taught to respect their elders and subjugate their desires for the good of the family. Children also learn the importance of family support in accomplishing goals. 13. The LGBT community is prohibited in Brunei. The people of Brunei drive on the left side, and the death rate of the country is extremely low at three deaths per 1,000 people. 